Welcome to this balmy, sunny day. I go home uh, tomorrow for a little bit. I had uh, set up, um, you're going to have Pastor Miller preaching on uh, Thanksgiving Eve at 6.30, and you have next Sunday with Pastor Miller, because this was prior commitment. And uh, by the time I get home on Tuesday, it's going to be 57 degrees, so... In some ways, misery is a little better than living in Illinois. <laughs> Illinois, yeah. Hey, you know, you guys are in the same kind of climate. If you don't like the weather, just stick around for an hour. It'll change. And before I forget, go Chiefs! <laughs> uh, it is good to see all of you folks. Um, I should actually behave myself today because uh, my boss is here, my, my earthly boss. Um, we're glad to have her. Do we have anybody else who's visiting? By the way, my name is Mike Gallagher. Uh, this is Kathleen, if you forgot who she is. She's my better half. Uh, you know, us men, us men, we get the best end of the bargain because we get to look at our wives all the days of our life, and they have to look at us. So uh, remember that. Cherish your wife. Anything, um, we do have a couple things going on. Uh, I never recognize, do we have any visitors? If you are a visitor, glad to have you here. Uh, blessings on your worship. Um, today we're talking about today with me in paradise. It's an odd sort of thing because it's the last Sunday of the church year and here we are talking about a very Lenten theme um, because we have... Uh, we have to talk about the cross of Christ, but we're going to talk about paradise and about heaven above. Uh, before I get going with our first uh, song, we're going to have a call to worship, and I, um, Kathy, I keep her in tune and on time, and she hits the notes I can't hit, so we ought to do pretty well today. Um, a couple of folks had asked for a copy of our ministry description that the elders have worked on. There's uh, maybe 10 copies out there on the yellow sheet, not the goldenrod but the yellow sheet. Um, so if you'd like to take a look at what we're going to be sending to our district president, there you go. There you go. This song, the tune will sound familiar to you country aficionados, but I'm not going to say from what. It's up to you to guess. But this song talks about the man of sorrows, and that man of sorrows that we know of as none other than Jesus Christ. As I say, this is usually a Lenten song, but we're going to have it as a start because we're going to be talking about the cross of Christ today. we 
Today we're using Divine Service uh, setting three. Let me put Agnes down and then we'll start. She's behaving today. Last week I found out what was wrong with the amplifier. Somebody had played the electric guitar for the Hess wedding and turned it all up. Last week I was going, what's wrong here? What's wrong? I thought maybe I was losing my hearing. Well, that's happening too. Why don't you If you'd like to follow in our book, it starts on page 184. I guess I'll get a book since I don't see it up there. We make our beginnings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor sinful sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. But I am hard for sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray thee, for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today for our intro, and the intro again is a time when we're ready to enter into the presence of God and symbolically we enter up these steps and into this chancel area to the very altar of God. Let us join our voices then in the words of the 46th song. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. 
God is in the midst of her, so she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God on high. His good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you reign among us by the preaching of your cross. Forgive your people their offenses, that we, being governed by your bountiful goodness, may enter at last into your eternal paradise. For you live and reign with the Father in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Ella's going to share with us a little preload of what it's going to be like in those last days from the prophet Malachi. Our Old Testament reading, Malachi chapter 3. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord, but you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as in the morning before the Lord of hosts? 
And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers do not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle comes from Colossians, the first chapter. He, was, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God has pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ella. Shall we rise and join in the Alleluia in verse... According to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that have never bore, and the breasts that have never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by, watching. But the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
And he said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed at his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breast. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Tim. As we remain standing, let us confess what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, if we have any children uh, that would like to come forward, uh, Kathleen's going to address them today. If she's got that microphone on, let us sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. I don't know. Good sure. morning, good morning. How there are you? You all have pretty dresses on, and you have warm boots on. Well, some of us have boots. Most of us have boots. But you have warm shoes and leggings. You got your leggings on? Those are all good things, because why? Because it's cold outside, and we came to church, right? Do you know what? I can talk with my hands. Did you see me singing with my hands when I said, yes, Jesus? That's how you say Jesus. Because that's where you touch the nail mark. That's where Jesus began. And then loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. So, Pastor Mike asked if I'd talk to you about heaven. Do you know what heaven is? Yeah. What, what is it? It's the place where Jesus lives. And God lives there. And the Holy Spirit lives there. It's getting pretty crowded. Do you know who else lives in heaven? Everybody who believes in Jesus get, eventually go to heaven. When you die, you go to heaven. And it's like, what? You have to die to go to heaven? That's usually the way it works. You like my ribbons, thank you. Do you know what's <laughs> not in heaven? There's lots of things that aren't in heaven. There's no moon, and there's no sun. And there's no darkness. They don't have electric lights. There may be candles, but we don't need them. You know why? Because in heaven, 
God is our light. So there's no darkness. In heaven, there's no ouches. There's no hurts. There's no tears. But there's people, 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 people. All of these people out here, someday you're going to get to go to heaven, but not yet. Not till Jesus calls. You know how you get to heaven? You believe in that guy. I believe in Jesus. And you know how you find Jesus? God gave us two things to find him. If you ever get scared, you know one thing you can do is this. You fold your hands, because that points us to Jesus. And if you ever get confused, you open your Bible. Some of you have a Bible already. Some of you have Bibles in your houses. Everybody should have a Bible in their house. When you get confused, though, and you want to know about heaven, or you get hurt, recently our kitty cat died. His name was Peach. And my sister cried and cried and cried because she remembered when her dog died and all these things. But in heaven, you know what else there is? There's a beautiful houses that Jesus makes ready for you and you and you and you and me. And everybody out there has their own house in heaven. And you don't have to be separate from anybody. And you don't have to go to sleep. And you don't have to wait. And you don't have to travel because you'll be right there with Jesus. Heaven is a good place and I can't wait to go. But I can't go till Jesus calls me. I don't know how to get there by walking. I got to wait for him to call me. I can drive to heaven. If there's a brick wall on the highway, I could maybe drive to heaven. Yeah. Or a deer. Sometimes a deer can help you get to heaven. <laughs> but, yeah, what, what really gets me to heaven is when God says, Kathleen, it's time. And I'll say, I love you, but I got to go because Jesus called. And I won't be sad because you know what? The longer I live, the more people I know that got to go to heaven. My mommy's there. My grandma's there. Both my grandpas are there. My sister's there. Not the sister that lives at home with me, but another sister. Her name was Midge. She got to go when she was only 12. And I have to wait. I'm lots more than 12. I'm like five times more than 12 and then some. That's for them to do their math. <laughs> So when I go to heaven, do you think I'm going to be sad? Oh, no. why would I be sad? No, I would not be sad. I would be happy. Do you know how to sign happy? You take two hands and you go up and up and you sign happy. It's because your joy in your heart is coming up. Happy. I'm going to be happy because... And when we get to heaven, no more tears, no darkness, no sun, no moon, no sea, because the sea separates us from people. But in heaven, we'll be close. It does say that it seems like a sea of glass is before the throne. Oh, there's one other thing in the heaven. There's a tree and a river, and it's the river that leads to God's throne, and it's the tree of life. And when we get there, we get to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and see everybody we love who loves <coughs> Jesus. So you know what? When I get to heaven, I'm going to look for you guys. It'll be a few years, but I'll look for you, and you look for me, okay? All right. I hope you look forward to heaven. I hope y'all look forward to heaven because I have to wait, but I have to wait for Christmas too, and it's always worth waiting for Christmas. Christmas is whose birthday? <laughs> it's Jesus' birthday. Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And you know what tomorrow is? It's his birthday. Pastor Mike's going to have a birthday tomorrow. Yes, he is.
Does Daddy have a birthday? Yeah, yeah. Birthdays are fun, right? When, when God calls me to heaven, it'll be a new birthday for me. I have two birthdays already. You have two birthdays if you've been baptized, because you have your birthday when you were born, and you have your birthday when Jesus marked you with the sign of the cross on the forehead and the chest as a sign that you're redeemed and his child. And that means you get to go to heaven. All right. It's good to see you. I'm glad you could come up and play with me. I look for you in heaven, okay? You're going to give me fist bumps? There you go. I like your bunny. Thank you so much for coming up. And how do you find heaven if you're scared in the dark? Pray. And that points us to Jesus. And we remember Jesus his story is in the Bible. Oh, and there's one more book in heaven. I don't know what it looks like, but I know what's in it. My name is in it, and your 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 name is in it, and his name is in it. Because Jesus wrote my names in that book. And that's the list of all the people invited to heaven. So daddy's name is in it. Mommy's name is in it. Grandmas and grandpas and our neighbors and our schoolmates. If you believe in Jesus, he writes your name in there. Thank you very much for coming to listen about heaven. Stay warm in your boots. As they return back to their seats, let's sing. Yes, Jesus loves me. They need to go back. <laughs> yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves, okay, for the Bible tells me so. She wants to say hi to you for your birthday. Well, hello. Happy birthday. Thank you. Well, that's so sweet of you. here to get you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. That's a good sign that she's come to school. Usually the kids are going, ah, running away from me. Okay, we better get on with this. I got uh, about 10 minutes left for my sermon. Uh, <laughs> this song was my mother's favorite song as we sing hymn 748, I'm But a Stranger Here. My mother used to tell everybody that she was ready to go to heaven and nobody, my father especially, didn't want to hear that. But my mother has been in heaven now for almost 50 years. She knew she was going home. So let's sing these words. I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, when I was a kid, I remember one book in particular that was a coffee table book. Like other people have, you know, the scenes of Ireland or horses, we had John Milton, Paradise Lost, the 17th century poet. And I remember reading at the end of that book, and this was a little, I can't describe the color. It was somewhere, it was a flesh-colored cover that was embossed. And it was embossed with Adam and Eve leaving paradise. This is how that book ends. The brandished sword of God before them blazed, fierce as a comet, which with torrid heat and vapor as the Libyan air adjusts began to parch that temperate clime, whereat on either land, hand the hastening angel caught our lingering parents, and to the eastern gate led them direct, and down the cliff as fast to the subjugated plain, then disappeared. They, looking back, all the eastern side beheld of paradise, so late their happy seat. Waved over by that flaming brand, the gate, with dreadful faces thronged and fiery arms, some natural tears they dropped, but wiped them soon. The world was all before them where to choose, their place of rest, and providence, their guide. We all inherited, not paradise from Adam and Eve, our parents, but we inherited this fallen world. It's paradise lost for all of us, at least in this life. But we remember as Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they were told they could eat of any tree in that garden. They were there, and they were able to just take their leisure, and they were able to take their time in this wonderful garden that would grow without weeds, without problems, without pestilence. They wouldn't have to work for a living other than what they wanted to do. They had it all. And yet Eve was tempted by the serpent who said, Hath God said, If you eat of this tree, you shall surely die? The serpent, who is actually Satan, said, He has done this so you would not be like him, so you would know the difference between good and evil. You would be like God's. So she saw that it was pleasant to the eye and took and ate. We don't know if it's an apple. You heard me say that too bad they didn't uh, have a prohibition of eating from pineapples. I'm not sure she could have gotten that bite out of there. Or as Mark Twain said, God should have forbade them to eat of the serpent. Now think about that one. But she ate and gave it to her husband, and you know how newlyweds are. Yes, honey, whatever, whatever. <sighs> and their eyes were open, and they realized that they were naked, and they hid themselves from God who came looking. Walking through that wonderful paradise, God said, Vobistu, Adam. As you know, God spoke German. And Adam said, we heard your voice and we were afraid. We were naked. And God said, who told you you were naked? Anyway, God decided he was going to confront these three who had fallen away. Satan fallen away earlier. That's one of the trick questions I have on confirmation tests. Who was the first to sin? First thing you're going to say is, well, Eve. No. No. Satan himself. Satan falling away with his angels that followed him. And Satan had one problem and one goal at the same time, and that was he wanted to be God. And yet we know from Holy Scriptures and from God's Ten Commandments what is the very first commandment that he gives us. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The one thing that Satan, who was known as Lucifer, the angel of light, the morning star, he was one that was the most beautiful angel. He was at God's right hand. 
He had everything except Godhood and being jealous of God's position. Jesus said he saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven above as he was cast down and cast upon this earth. But when God approached Adam and Eve, he said this. And he started with the man. This is from Genesis 3, recall? Because you have done this, cursed are you. You have listened to the voice of your wife. That's what it says. I'm not making this up. It's right there in verse 17. And have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you. You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember what he told Eve? He said what? I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. It's there in Scripture. And he looks at the serpent, and I always think the serpent cringing, looking around like, "Uh uh-oh. What did he say? Because you have done this, cursed are you above livestock and above all the beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your heel, or his, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That brings us to the fact of why we are looking at the cross of Calvary today. There was Jesus up there on that hill, and you have that marked down with all of your bulletins today. The three crosses on top of that hill far away. And he was crucified with two thieves, robbers, one on each side. And they were mocking him, and they were carrying on. And the one thief was telling him, If you are the Son of God, save yourself and save us along with you. And the other thief looked at him and said, Do you not fear God? And I love that exchange that he has with Jesus when he says, Today, Today, remember me. And what did Jesus say in so many words? You will be with me in paradise. Because that thief was repentant. He said, we are getting what we deserve, and yet this man has done no thing. He's here as an innocent. When we start putting this all together and we realize that we had paradise lost, that's what we inherited from Adam and Eve. Are you looking for an inheritance from your parents? We all start thinking about this, don't we, at a certain age? Kathy just shared with you that she's, she looks younger than I am, but we're actually very close in age. But we start talking about it, and I talk about it more than she does because I, I'm of the opinion that maybe I'm just going to spend my kid's inheritance and be done with it. But, you know, you start thinking, well, how are we going to divvy this up? We're going to give the kids half and half. We're gonna, not that I'm a rich man, but when you put all that junk together and all the vehicles and all of this and all of that, it adds up to a tidy sum. And finally I said, okay, let's see. We've got two kids and we have six grandchildren. Split it up eight ways. But you see, the inheritance that we're talking about is not that kind of an inheritance. It's a much more dire one. For the inheritance that we inherit is original sin. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We were born to die. Because they had taken of that fruit, and Satan rightly said, are you going to eat of this and die? He said, surely you're not going to die. You're not going to take a bite of this fruit and fall over dead right now, like it's got cyanide or arsenic in it. But what they didn't realize is that one day they would grow older and older and older. 
and someday die physically. And that's what we have inherited. Yes, we were conceived in sin. Yes, we live with this thing that we're calling original sin because we're born with a tendency and a desire to sin every day of our lives. So where does that leave us? It leaves us with paradise lost. Just like Adam and Eve, that angel was set at that gate so they couldn't come back in, not just because it was a punishment. Yes, they were thrown out. Yes, Adam had to work for a living now. Yes, Eve would bear children in pain. I love it when a young couple says, we're having a baby. We're not having anything. The woman is having that baby. I remember Carol Burnett one time describing childbirth to a man this way. She said, just take your lower lip and pull it all the way back to the back of your head and you'll get an idea of what it's like. But just like that pain is forgotten when that mother looks at that little baby, we are in the birth pains as well because we are in the process of realizing that we have paradise regained. Because we, like that thief, look to the cross, look to that hill, look to that sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for us, taking all of our pain, all of our suffering, all of the punishment that we deserve upon himself, and going to that cross. And rightly so, that other thief said, this man has done no thing. We are guilty. We are like those thieves on both sides of that cross. And we look to Jesus. Some of us in this world are like the one that scoffs and said, if you are the Son of God, come down off that cross and save us. Show us a little sign. If you are God, show it to us right now. Bring peace to this earth. Bring prosperity here. Make it work down here, Lord, that there's no more pestilence. There's no more hunger. There's no more thirst. There's no more war. Do it! And then I'll believe. And the other thief was a lot more humble and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Lord. There's a beautiful little passage that is from Isaiah chapter 11. And I like to read that. This is where I deviated from what I was actually going to do at first. This is the prophecy about what it's going to be like when that day comes, when the time of the Messiah will truly come. And this is chapter 11, beginning with verse 6. You'll recognize the section when I start reading. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You see, on God's holy mountain, that time to come when all of us will be gathered together again, we read about it in Psalm 46, about that wonderful place to come where the Lord will rule and nations will bow down to Him. Well, He'll break the bow and break that spear and there will be peace among men. When that wonderful day comes, we remember that we look to that hill. We look to the holy mountain that was actually the place of the skull. The place where Jesus was crucified. The place where they came and took His lifeless body away after He had said, as Tim read for us, it is finished. The way of salvation had been completed. This was God's plan from the very beginning. From that promise that was made to Eve. From that promise that was made to Adam. From that warning that was given to the serpent and to Satan that He would crush His head. Certainly that serpent looked like he had won when Jesus had died on that cross. He had bruised his heel. And yet you see those old manuscripts and you see those old etchings like 
Durer, who had actually had Jesus rising again from the dead and bursting forth from the tomb, and under his foot was the head of the serpent. That is what we have to look forward to. Because of that holy mountain that is called Calvary, that is called Golgotha, the place of the skull, we have another holy mountain to look forward to. The place where all of us will be gathered together. A place where there will be no, as Kathy reminded us, no hunger or thirst. Every tear will be wiped away from the eye. All those who have gone before in the faith will be there. In the book of Hebrews, we're told, this chapter 9, verse 27, just as man is destined to die once and after that to face the judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time. All of us live, all of us die, and we are at the judgment for all practical purposes. We are there with our Lord. And it's not a fearful thing. It's not like that bumper sticker one time said on the back of somebody's car years ago, Jesus is coming back and boy is he... You can fill in the blank. It's not like Santa Claus is coming down the chimney with a baseball bat to get even. That's not the way it works. The Lord has come for us. The Lord has shown Himself on that holy mountain to be our Savior, to be our forgiver, to be our future, to one day allow us back into paradise itself. You see, when Adam and Eve were expelled, it was also a grace because He didn't want them to come and eat of the tree of life and live forever in their sins. They lived 900 and something years, but yet they one day died because... The Lord did not want them to still be here on this earth, fallen and sinful. But one day we're left into His presence and there is that tree of life. There is that river of God that flows from the throne and we'll be able to draw from that river and eat from the fruit of the tree of life and live forevermore. That is our future. Paradise regained. In the blessed name of Jesus, amen. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. We're going to um, stand up and let's sing our offertory. We don't do this much. These are the words of King David after he had been found out by the prophet Nathan and accused of adultery and murder. These are the words that he sang to the Lord. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. may be seated. We gather our offerings today and we utilize these funds to be able to spread the wonderful message that there is paradise regained through faith in Christ. Thank you, Nori. Help us, Lord God, to know that our place in this world is to share the wonderful message of your Son, Jesus, with all whom we meet. Let us use these funds for that end, Lord God, not just to keep this place going, but to make sure that all people in their lives are kept going towards that wonderful gift, that wonderful mountain of forgiveness and love. In Jesus' name, amen. We do, Heavenly Father, come before you. We ask that you be with all of us, reminding us, Lord, that death is not what awaits us, not eternal death. We close our eyes briefly in death and we open them again and you will be there for us. Thank you for opening the gates of paradise again, Lord God, 
through the gift of your Son, Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for coming down to this earth and taking upon yourself that task of prying open those doors again, of lying down upon that cross and letting them raise you up so that looking to you, we might say, remember us when you come into your kingdom and hear the blessed words, today you will be with me in paradise. Thank you, Lord God, for bursting forth from that tomb and crushing the head of Satan and reminding all of us that when we open those eyes after physical death, we will open them to you in heaven above, in the city of God, upon your holy mountain, and we will be there forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord God, for this world that you would bring peace, as we read about on the psalmist, that we would, Lord God, know that you are in charge. We would make that claim that you would bring peace to the Ukraine. Work on the heart of Vladimir Putin, who makes a claim that he's going to bring about the Holy Roman and Russian Empire, whatever he calls it. Lord God, if he has faith in his heart and mind any way, anyhow, that you would work upon him and allow him to bring peace. This is your world, Lord God. We turn it over to you. Be with all of the election uh, results and the elected and appointed officials, Lord God. Use them as tools in your mighty hands, for you are still in charge. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we ask that you be with our congregation as we're moving forward into our second phase, as we call it, Help us, Lord God, to get everything necessary uh, so that we might be able to send it off to our circuit visitor and our district president um, at the first part of this next year, and that, Lord God, we can get on with it. Help us, Lord God. Give us your guidance, your wisdom, and your strength. We ask it in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> we take this moment, Lord God, of silence as we raise up to you people we are concerned about. Use us, Lord God, as your ambassadors to not only whisper words of prayers into your ears, but speak words boldly of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Use our hands, Lord God, to not just fold in prayer, but to reach out with loaves of bread and helping balm. Use our feet, Lord God, and take us to the places that you would have us to go to find the lost and the alone. These things, Lord God, we pray boldly, not because we are worthy, but we pray them in the blessed name of your Son as we rise and join in the words which he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us then sing, Be still, my soul. M number 752. Let's sing all four verses. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us that future, for giving us that glimpse into the life that is to come. We ask it in Jesus' name. In every change, ye faithful will remain. Be still, 
my soul, your best, your heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful land. Be still, my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know his voice with rule them while he dwell below. And all is dark and Then you will better know his love, his heart, who comes to soothe your sorrows and your fears. Be still, my soul, your Jesus can repay from his own fullness all he takes away. Be still, my soul, the hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, Sorrow for God, love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed we shall meet at last. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Today, you will be with me in paradise.